Welcome to episode one of the off season, season two. We're here in Boyle GA Club with Roscommon Star and a Smith. Yes, Ander. How are we? Good, Shane. You all right? Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Good, Good. to see you. Welcome yeah. to Thanks. episode one of season two. Very excited for this season and it's great to have you for the first episode, okay? Thanks for having me. You've seen a little bit of episode uh, season one? I have. I have watched a few episodes, yeah. So excited to see what, what we have in store. Brilliant. Let's not delay. Let's just dive straight into it. Okay, Ander. So just like season one, I always try to make a story out of it. Okay, so can you tell me what your earliest memory is playing with the boil? Yeah, so I suppose, look, um, I lived in the town since I was since I was born, I suppose, very close to the pitch, maybe five or six minute walk from the pitch. Um, would have started, I suppose, like everyone under six, under eights, under tens, and would have gradually worked my way up through that. Um, I had three older brothers as well. Uh, two of them would have played as well, quite quite a lot, all with Boyle. Who the, uh, Donny and... Donny and Keane. Keane, okay, yeah, very yeah, good. No sisters? Them. No sisters, no. Right, I, have okay. an, I have another brother, Ronan, who doesn't play now at all as well. Did he but play one back then? I, I played a small bit underage, but Right, then okay, just, there's all this one, isn't there? Yeah, there is, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's probably so, the brains. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, don't know about that, but he's something. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, yeah. But, was, uh, but yeah, that was kind of it. Like, Dad, Dad would have played for Boyle. It was right. just a natural progression. Do you know, when you're living in a town, uh, sport is a big part of the town. Gaelic and soccer and Boyle J was a big focal point of the town and it just was, was the natural thing to come down play with your mates and just yeah. get immersed in it straight away. And you mentioned soccer there and um, off camera you were telling me the soccer pitch is quite close Boyle Celtic. Yeah. Did you play for them underage? Yeah I would have played for Boyle Celtic um, underage. Um, great club as well I suppose they're doing a lot of good things now with the pitch at the moment. Um, would, would have been in the Sligo Leitrim League for a lot of right, years okay. but recently have joined the Roscommon League and are doing well there uh, and in fairness to both clubs they really work well together, particularly over the last few years, and um, you know, they're a massive part of the town. So there's a good understanding between the Gaelic culture and the soccer, yeah. because there's probably, is there a big crossover with, let's say, the senior players in Boyle playing soccer? There used to be quite a bit. Um, one or two lads maybe would have played both kind of at the same time, but in recent years now, um, it is very much either Gaelic or soccer at right, the moment. Okay. It is hard, but look, there's a new manager in with Boyle Celtic this year who actually has a big J GA connection, that so helps. he'll be giving a, f a few phone calls to the GA lads whenever we finish, I'm sure. But uh, at the moment, it's it's very much one or the other at the moment. And right. different seasons as well. Of course, so you're talking about off-season, a lot of your lads would go over. Yeah. And uh, obviously yourself, you're probably only have like short off season in terms of not coming into Roscommon. Did you ever venture into soccer even in the last 10 years? I did, yeah, I did. A couple of years there, maybe 2018, 2019 would have gone back. I was living at home at the time, so it just made it a bit more natural, I suppose. You could train on a Tuesday, Thursday. Right. Maybe we had a couple of years there with the club where it didn't maybe go as well as we thought and we were maybe finished in the middle of September. Okay. And then you have maybe a couple of months there to play and I did that, loved it and still will go back when I'm finished Gaelic, I think at some stage to you know, for play for Boyle Celtic that's, and go from there. That's very interesting, not too many I don't think do that. No, no, it's just, that's just something I like doing, you know, I was a big fan of it and like I said, when they're not crossing during the year like the soccer season is very much September to April and the Gaelic season at the peak of it is kind of the opposite so yeah. um, if you can do both then I'm all for it. You seem like a centre back are you? No centre forward. Centre forward on I'm top? I'm insulted by that now. I'm very <laughs> Ibrahimovic insulted. Ibrahimovic lamp it up. <laughs> yeah yeah no. Brilliant. Centre so forward last man and yeah defending now wouldn't be, uh, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't be a thing at all. <laughs> very good very good. Look we'll bring it back to the Gaelic. Uh, yeah, we don't yeah. want to talk about soccer too much but that's that's very interesting. Um, so while I was doing a bit of digging and I did a little bit of research coming up through the underage, mm. were you always a team that's playing at the highest level, Division 1, or were you someone that maybe just uh, came through the, the higher senior ranks over the last 10 years? Yeah, I suppose my own age group, um, the year below me and the year above me, we'd have been pretty strong. We'd okay. have been Division 1 probably the whole way through League and Championship. We won a lot of Division 1 leagues. Um, 
from under 12 right up right, to minor. Okay. Uh, we were in a lot of Division 1 championship finals. Didn't actually get over the line in championship until we were minor, which would have been my bad year, let's say. So it would have been my brother Donald's good year. That's 2010, that 2011? That was 2011, yeah. Right, okay. So we won the Division 1 minor A championship and league that year, which was massive. First time, I think, to win the minor championship. In and that was your first championship medal underage? Yeah, first championship medal underage, yeah. So that was a big one um, for us, you know, to win the championship first time for the club in 70 years, maybe, I think, at the time. And won the league then to get the double, which was ah, it was huge. It was, it was great for the club. Okay. And to be honest, that those two or three years are kind of the, the core nearly of the, of the senior team now, yeah. a lot of us. So we went up then to tw under 21. Uh, played three or four years under 21 Division 1, got to once again got to two finals, lost, two semi finals and lost as well. So, yeah. um, ah, look, that's kind of the bulk of the, of the senior team at the moment. There's a, yeah. good, there's a good mix then. And if you get two or three lads in from the underage uh, teams every year, then you're doing well. And look, we still have about five or six older lads that are yeah. still holding the forward as well, which are brilliant. Brilliant. You mentioned your brothers there, Cian and uh, Donny. Did they yeah. do both play in that minor? Uh, Donny did. No, D uh, Donny did. So Donny would have played. No, Cian's a bit older than us. Cian is. Uh, oh. Cian's actually 35 now. So Cian's the manager of the senior team here. So Cian's the manager of the last three years of, of the Boyle senior team. Right. So, um, he hasn't. He 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 finished up playing a bit earlier than us. Yeah. And I, I did want to touch on that a wee bit. Just yeah. very. I know you talked about it. I think I, I did a bit of research back in 2017. Yeah. Um, he's doing very well at the minute, Cian. He is. Yeah. He's doing great. Yeah. So he's been. Like I said, managing us the last two or three years, and he's all good with him. Other than that's, that as well, so that's just that's great. brilliant. That's brilliant. He had, quite, he had a very good uh, minor career. I think he won a something with Russ Common. Didn't yeah, he? he won a minor in 06. That's yeah, brilliant. Okay. So he's part of that panel. Yeah, but um, since then he's gotten really big into the coaching and the training and right. the management. So that's that's a big thing for him now. Brilliant. Okay, so um, going from the minor championship, you probably played senior football quite young did you 16 17 i'm gonna guess uh, i was what was I? yeah i was probably 17 so 20 it would have been that 2011 year uh would have played we were intermediate at the time it would have been part of the panel that year didn't either came on in a game or two maybe if i can remember but yeah then the next year then when i was 18 in 2012 was my right. kind of first full year gotcha, out. okay you know, i was brought i think 2011 i might have been brought in after we were knocked out we were scamming in the minor championship in the County Minor Championship, let's right. say. Right, and the 2013 was a big year for the seniors. It was. It was massive. It was. Uh, we won intermediate. We won intermediate championship. We'd been, I suppose, knocking on the door a couple of years. Um, lost the semi final in 12, and then got to a final in 13 and won, won, uh, won that in uh, in Strokestown against against Tulsa by three points. And that was a big thing, which was once again it was a lot of the minor team from 2011 that yes. I mentioned there that were part of it as well. So that was kind of a. Look, that was a stepping stone for the club, I suppose, and we've been senior ever since. Um, 2014, we kind of stayed stayed up, which was a big thing for us, because when we won it in 05, we went straight back down the next year. So there was big emphasis on us staying up in, in and 2014. And you haven't went down since? Haven't went down since, no. We've been, we've been up since, been to quarters, semis, and been yeah. to one final. So we've been competitive to a degree, you know, in, in senior championship. Can I ask who is the manager of your minor success? For the club, yes. Uh, so Vinny Flanagan was the manager of our Boyle minor team back then. Vinny has a great history with the club in terms of he played a long time. He was full back on the Boyle team that won in uh, intermediate in '94, okay. and I think in '83 as well. And Vinny then he managed. Uh, he was part of the management in '05. Yes, that won. Uh, the intermediate championship in okay. 2005, and then last year he brought he brought the ladies team to win their first ever intermediate right, championship okay. last so year. So he's legend. he is he's done unbelievable things with the club. He's always been involved. So he's a real good CV of management within the club. Brilliant. Okay, so it's quite a reoccurring thing that I'm noticing with even season one episodes. Yeah. That a lot of the really good minor teams, if you can keep them lads together, yeah, that is the future for the senior teams. I know minor clubs that maybe have disintegrated, maybe lads that went off traveling or college happens and um, a lot of the lads are probably just go away from football. Mm. But in your case, like you're going to say 85% of those lads all stuck together? Yeah, I'd say it at, at the moment now it, w it would be at least that. Like we have lost a few lads throughout the years, don't get me wrong, but there's still a core of us still there that are still hanging in there yeah, yeah. and playing, I suppose, even part of the squad and, and around the club. And it does make a huge difference. It has made a huge difference to us. Um, it's no coincidence in years gone by where maybe our minor teams, under eight teams haven't been as strong that we're only bringing in one or mm. two. Do you know, when you can bring in five or six to a senior team, it's massive and it makes a huge difference, do you know? Brilliant, okay. So last year, big year for you. 
Yeah. Um, it's probably slightly disappointing at the end of it. Yeah, yeah, it was. Look, it was look, it was a great year when all was said and done. I suppose that we won the Division One League for the first time ever, I think, and then obviously Championship then rolled into Championship and had a great run, got to the final, and, and unfortunately lost. We lost to Strokestown, who were in their first final in about twenty years. A point, um, wasn't it? We lost by a point. Yeah. So Strokestown, uh, Strokestown were a fine side. They had been a real good battle with us underage between yeah, minor yeah. and twenty ones. We'd yeah. always been kind of playing each other in different finals. And uh, and fairness on the day, look, could have went either way. It was last kick of the game, last minute. Was it by a point? Yeah. Was so it a from play? It was from play. Yeah. So yeah, well, look, it's it's hard to dress it up. Very disappointing, obviously. Yeah, I can very imagine. disappointing. But um, just part of it, you know. You just kind of can't, you can't dwell on it too long. You just roll with it. And look, we're hope look we're hoping to get there. Again, obviously, um, it's, it's not simple, as you know. But. Uh, that's the that, that's always the plan. And championship you played last week as you're up and running again. Yeah, up and running again. Uh, bad start now last week, which uh, puts us under a small bit of pressure going into next week's game. But look, it's great to be back. Great to be back with the club. And look, we're still hoping to you know try and kick on now and have a bit of a run in the championship. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so that's a little bit on the boil. Um, I do want to revert back to 2011, 2012. When was how many times did you play? How many years sorry, did you play with us? Common minors. Uh, three years. 10, three 11, years, 12. Three year? Yeah. Right, yeah. very good. Okay, so uh, what was the first year? 2010. Right, how'd that go? Uh, 20, Did you play much? Uh, we lost actually to Mayo in a Connex semi final, so back then it was knock straight knockout. Yes. So we, we were gone straight. Away. I didn't play, I was on the bench maybe. Semi final, only four teams? Oh, you probably got to buy in yeah, the first game or something. Be fight, you know, yeah, 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 oh, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah, never mind. Yeah, a bit smaller. Silly question. So. Um, but yeah, that was my first taste. But I was maybe brought into the panel maybe end of March, start of April that year. Right. Um, but it was good. It was a good experience even to get a taste of it, even if I didn't kind of play at all in the championship. Yeah. But um, good experience and kind of get, got me ready, I suppose, what was expected for, for 2011. Right. Were you under 16? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So. Um, I always would have thought, you know, if you are a three year minor, that's something quite special. That doesn't happen to everybody. Um, so the following year, was 2011, how'd that go? Yeah, 2011 was, you know, it was a real good year. It was kind of a, a breakout year for a lot of us in terms of playing county football. Yeah. Um, we had a strong, once again, we had quite a strong team, strong panel. Uh, Ross Shannon was our manager who had been involved in Roscommon minor panels before, so we had a good feel for it. Um, yeah, it was, look, it was a great year. We beat Mayo in a Connacht semi-final. Uh, and then went on to beat Galway in a Connacht final, which was great. Okay. Um, so you have a Connacht Championship from that year in 2011? Yeah, Connacht Minor Championship 2011, right. yeah, which was, it was brilliant. It was a great, it was our, like all of our players' first experience of proper inter county football. Um, you know, seeing what it was like, got a really good exposure. The Connacht final was in the high that year in 2011, and our Scammon were playing Mayo in the senior final that day. And I remember there was a massive crowd in the high that day for our game, for the minor final, and we had never experienced anything yeah, like that yeah. before. So there was a great buzz off that. Um, went on then, played our man a quarter final in Crow Park and beat them after extra time. Okay. A real quality game. Um, and then ended up losing to Tipperary in the semi-final, who went on to beat Dublin in the they final did, yes, that year. I remember that. So they're, they're like, that was a strong Tipperary team. Um, a lot of them would be involved in 21s teams and senior mm. teams have gone by. So that was like probably proper first taste of, you know, inter-county football, um, albeit being minor, but it was a good, it was a good introduction. Was that your first time playing Crow Park then, that quarterfinal? It's funny, actually, that same year, New York played in the Connacht Minor Championship that year for the first time ever. Okay. And they came over in April. Yes. And we, they were drawn to play us. And that game was fixed for Crow Park, unbelievably. So okay. we played New York in the Minor Championship in Crow Park in April time. I think it might have been before a Division 3 or 4 league final. Okay. So it was our second time. That probably stood to you. It did, it did in a way, it did. It was brilliant, but it was like a surreal experience, yeah. to be honest, to be playing there. I think I was 16 and that wasn't 17 till later on in the year. So it was a huge yeah. experience and it did probably stand to us when we played Darma that, for that day. So this is a really good point because now the minors is under 17. Yeah. And the reason why they don't have the minor final on before the senior final at Crow Park because they feel there's too much pressure on the young lads playing in Crow Park, but you're telling me that you played in Crow Park at 16. Did you feel, if you had changed back time now, do you feel that you shouldn't have been in Crow Park because of added pressure or? Ah, no, I don't think so. I think you have to, like Crow Park is, you know, it's yeah. a national stadium. It's the best place to play football. I think playing there in front of a big crowd or even, you know, obviously it wasn't a packed crowd that day, the day we were there, but it's still the energy and, you know, what you get from it, it stands to you, you know, and I think, yeah. If you want to go on and play in senior inter-county football, which would have been the dream of a lot of our lads playing minor, 
you know, playing in Co Park as early and as often as you can, it stands to you and I think it, it, you'd be foolish to think otherwise. Yeah, I totally agree. You know? So that is something that baffles me now that they're not playing at Crow Park. Yeah. He missed that, you know, with all Ireland final at half time you see the winning team parading around. Hundred percent. It was a big part of J look to J for yeah. years, you know, and it was you know, even all Ireland final day you always got in if you if your county wasn't in the final, you were getting you in went. for half time of the minor, just have a look and Absolutely. see what was happening. It was a big part of it. Yeah, so 2012, your final year. Disappointing year, was it? Or? Yeah, it ended up disappointing in the end. We won Connacht <clears throat> again, which was great. We beat Mayo, which would have been a strong Mayo team. A lot of the Mayo seniors now playing on it at the moment. But um, ended up losing the quarterfinal to Kerry in Crow Park. Um, oh, it was a horrible day. It was We missed we missed a lot. We missed a penalty. We missed a couple of open goals. Um, and then we... Missed a, I actually missed a chance at the end to equalise it, a bad, a bad chance at the end, so it was a sour ending to my minor career, yeah. unfortunately. But uh, ah, look, that was, look, it was just what it was. Kerry, Kerry weren't a bad side. They lost to Dublin, who went on to win it, mm. and Dublin were very strong that year, yeah. extremely strong minor team. So, look, what, like, was Mannion and Jack McCaffrey's final? They, they were minor? actually there, they were 2011. Oh, 2012 were they? would have been like Davy Byrne, okay. Comer Costello, gotcha. uh, Connor McHugh would have been on it, Shane Carthy. Yes. They were, they were strong, they were very good. Um, um, but disappointing end to it, but look, the three years were brilliant and still yeah. a lot of fond memories there. And when did you transition then into the senior setup straight away? Yeah, the next year, so uh, John Evans was managing the Roscommon team. He took over Roscommon in November 2012, December 2012. And it was about February, end of February, I got a call from him. I was just playing with DCU at the time. I was playing with Roscommon in 21s and DCU freshers mm -hmm. at the time and got a call from John to see what would be interesting coming in. Uh, of course, jumped at it. Just like, yeah, I'll be there. Um, and made my debut actually against Monaghan in the league. What year? 2013? 2013, yeah, a league, league game. Where was in, that in? It was in the Hyde. Okay. Not, it wasn't one for the purists. It finished 8-7 to Typical Roscommon. Man, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. 8-7 <laughs> it finished um, on a really windy day in the Hyde. Which that was Division 1? No, it was. Division no, 2? Division 3. Division 3? I think the Monaghan... Well, I know Monaghan won also that year. Yeah, I think the, they got promoted that year to Division 2, I think. And then they must have got a back-to-back -back promotion, And then maybe. I think they got back-to-back, -back, I think. That was Maliki Works first year, probably. Probably was, yeah. Okay, so you just won Division 3 that year? No, Did we didn't. No? We were only mid-table. We won the, We won Division 3 the next year, 2014. Okay, right, nearly. Close. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So that was my introduction. It was uh, yeah, a real windy day in the Hyde, which isn't a massive shock. And Did you start that day against Monaghan? No, came on, on. came on for about 20 minutes or okay, so. Okay, right, okay. So that was my first yeah, introduction into it. And um, I suppose I've been there since made my debut in the championship that summer against Mio. Mio beat us quite well, mm. came on at half time and that. And yeah, since then it's been just been there since. So. Brilliant, okay. So you touched a wee bit on DCU. I'll, start, I'll, I'll jump in there before we go into Ross Common. Uh, how many years were you in DCU? Because all I can remember <laughs> through the fucking 2013 to 2020, how many years were you in DCU? I was there six years. <laughs> and how many Sigerson Cups did you play in? I played in three. Right, okay. So I had one fresher. No, sorry, two. Two. Right. I had one fresher. Or was it one or two? No, yeah, one fresher. Sorry, three years Sigerson. Right, okay. So I didn't play then a couple of years. Right, okay. Was that against the rules then? or? Uh, I, one year might have been yeah I think it was, a, it was there was a rule brought in if you do a, a third course or something like that yeah something there, the there was a lot of dodgy stuff going yeah, on yeah it wasn't it wasn't DC yeah, yeah. now it was. so you have a fresher championship do you? I do a fresher championship yeah uh, that was 2012 slash 2013 okay um, so that was great we we beat um, we beat UCD in the final which would have been a star studded UCD time or team yeah they had a Mannion McCaffrey right Shane McEntee from Mead Niall Kelly Kildare okay. Kingston from Leash did a real quality team but we had a good team too now as well don't get me wrong was that the final? that was the final it was played in Clontarf if I remember end of February um, real right. went to extra time we beat them by a point I think Brilliant, so it was okay. a real yeah a real good day out for us right okay and then 2015 was that your Sigerson? 2015 was the Sigerson yeah so once did you again UCD again? We beat UCD in the semi-final, so oh. remember the Sigerson was the weekend at that stage. Yes, okay, so where was that one? It was down in Cork, so okay. we beat UCD on the Friday um, by uh, two points, I think, and then beat UCC on the Saturday in extra time by a point. UCC, yeah, So yeah. UCC, okay. were, were they were actually defending champions at the time, were quite right. strong. But, okay. um, and that was the end of, you didn't win a Sigerson after that? No, no we lost the final in 16 and that was it then. Who beat you in the finals? Uh, UCD. Right, okay. Up in, up in Jordanstown. Yeah, up in, up in Jordanstown. So, yeah, no, despite what... Jordanstown, I was at that weekend. I, um, we were in a trench. Dundalk was in a trench cup weekend that weekend in Jordanstown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Seth, Conor McCarthy and all would have played for UCD. Yeah, Conor McCarthy. Jack, Mac Jack McCaffrey, yeah. yeah uh, 
the same guys I mentioned, same John guys, Heslin, yeah, yeah. Paul Mannion, right, okay. uh, Mick Fitzsimons was actually playing fullback for UCD that day, Ryan Wiley from Monaghan. Yes. Do you know, really, like, qual once again, a quality yeah, yeah. team, do you know? So. The Pats won the, won the trench that year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Kenny was playing that stuff. So, uh, right, well, you've had a good few uh, years at um, DCU, and I'm sure you would have had more. Chances yeah. to play Sigerson, did that rule didn't come in? Uh, yeah, I probably would have, but to be honest, look, I was... Yeah, at that suppose, time you were in the Masters and stuff. Yeah, I was in the Masters, I was just happy enough. Look, I did kind of standard one-year fresher, three-year Sigerson, and that was, yeah. was kind of happy enough after that. Happy yeah. with my lot, and, you know, uh, looked, like I said, great time there. Was under the guidance of some really quality yeah, yeah. managers. We had Ross Munley over us as fresher, mm -hmm. um, Nile Moina at Sigerson. Mm -hmm. A lot of good coaches there in between as well, so, like, a real good football education and how kind of football like the way it should be played and that so like it was a great uh, four or five years and Brilliant. good fond memories and was it hard to juggle Were, well I suppose the inter-county scene were you playing league on top of Sigerson? yeah we would have been playing league it was hard to juggle I suppose at the time there wasn't it was probably in the, around that time where communication between inter-county managers and Sigerson managers wasn't yeah, yeah. wasn't great you know everyone wants them for your own and um, so at times there was a bit of a, a power struggle um, but as a player as a young player you're just I suppose you're being told where to go. You're just, look, yeah. we have a Sigerson match here on Wednesday. Um, it's not going to benefit you training Tuesday with Roscommon. So look, take the night off and play Wednesday. Yeah. I'll see you the weekend. In did that happen? That, it, it, it did happen eventually, but it wasn't, it wasn't okay. simple at the time. Do you know, it was. It was you I never remember. felt flogged or anything? Never felt as if you were playing too much? Um, I suppose there would have been times you would have felt you were playing too much. Um, to be honest, for us, it's always been the travelling. Like we were travelling down from Dublin to Roscommon. Wow. Um, the travelling is just is, is, is the killer. The travelling is the killer, to be honest. Right. Um, was there any carpooling? Was there any? There was carpooling. We used to get a, a bus that brought us down as well. But you know, you're still you're leaving DCU at four o'clock or whatever, half four, and you're not home maybe till twelve. You know, so it's nearly a full oh, day. In that itself. is just that is that's yeah. tough. Yeah, it's tough going. Mm. And um, yeah, the balance then, then, and you're you know that was probably the trickiest part of it all. The travelling yeah. still is probably the trickiest part of travelling. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would hope that maybe soon that the lads can just focus on Sigerson or Sigerson can maybe find us a time slot within the year that allows them that the players aren't with the county. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to think so as well. Look, anyone look, anyone you speak to, I know they'll all say the same. It's a great competition. It is a great competition. Yeah, you don't want to lose it. You don't want to lose it, no. It's just, it's, it's real good football, uh, good competition, playing with lads from all over the country. It's, yeah, it's, it's, a, great, it's a great one to play in. Yeah. What if I told you that you could use Whoop as your own personal wearable health and fitness coach for GEA? Whoop isn't just another fitness tracker. It is constantly measuring my rest and heart rate, HRV, activity levels and sleep performance. I use Whoop daily to allow me to track key metrics so I can train hard as well as coach teams in GEA to the best of my ability. What I have learned by using Whoop is that when I reach my sleep goal each night, I am primed for high strain the following day through exercise and coaching. GEA players can benefit from Whoop by understanding when to push themselves to their max based off their recovery score that morning. If you are interested in improving your health and overall performance, you can go to join.whoop.com slash Shane Rice to get started this offseason. So, Russ Common, you were playing Sigerson and Russ Common, and we touched a little bit on the Division 3. Division 3, you won the title in 14. Yep. Now, from an outsider, me looking at Russ Common in terms of National League, I always had a check at the start of the year what division in because you just can't really find consistency to stay in Division 1. It's jumping between one, and if you get relegated to two, you're nearly too strong for two, you go back up. Why has the consistency, let's say, over the last, what, eight years not been there? Like, can you put a finger on it? Yeah, um, it's hard, it's hard, Shane, to be honest. It's, look, as a player, it's obviously very frustrating. Um, like I said, we've been very much jumping up and down. When we've been, like I said, we won 14, in 14, we won Division 3, and Division 2, we won 15. And, you know, that was kind of our first taste of Division 1 then, 2016. And, from then on, from there since, it has been a bit of a, yeah, a yo-yo, I suppose. Um, look, it, it is hard to put your finger on it. There's been, I suppose, a, a probably lack of probably consistency there in terms of maybe management to management, maybe probably in yeah. a way. Um, a lot of turnover of players, which, yeah. look, I know every panel is affected by that, but. Who's we, the longest serving manager probably in the last? Um, I think we had Anthony Cunningham for four years. Okay. Maybe two, or two of them were the COVID years. Um, outside of that, you know, there wasn't been, it hasn't been like a, yeah. let's say a Maliki O'Rourke or a Colin yeah. Collins or a, do you know, someone. you do need that time. I, we, I think we do. We probably do need it. Look, and look, there's obviously other reasons as well. Probably haven't been good enough at times. Definitely at times haven't been good enough. Um, 
look, turno like I said, mentioned there, turnover of players. We've lost, we just seem to be losing probably 10 or 12 regular, like players who'd be seeing game time every year, mm. the last number of years. And like, I, look, every county is the exact same as that, but for a smaller county, uh, like ourselves, where we probably struggled with that turnover, um, and that's been seen. Then, yeah. when it comes to those league games in February, January, February, March, where you know it's pitches are a bit heavier, it's a lot more physical. We're probably just being turned over. Very, we were turned, been turned over very easily, um, to be honest. And we're getting relegated without even having a chance of staying in yeah. the division. Do you know what I mean? Coming down to the last day, we were yeah. gone a lot of the time. Which you mentioned turnovers there. Would that be something that maybe you focused in on over those years that probably let you down? Um, ah, yeah, there would have been, yeah, I suppose mainly, mainly the turnover of players we were kind of missing out That's on, you know, okay, yeah, right. probably more so that, but ah, look, I'm sure there was a lot of turnovers as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of them Because I know well. different teams would focus on analysis every year, post and uh, pre-year, and they'd look at what really let them down, and yeah. maybe you just talked about there, the lack of physicality. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah. Uh, you had a great year uh, last year, new manager. Um, Davy Burke, yeah. I'm a big fan of him. I like the way he speaks. I like the way he's so open. Mm. Listen to a couple of interviews. Um, last year in the league, especially, he's really he's really kicked on, really clicked. Did you start preseason earlier than usual, or why do you think he's picked so well for the league, especially um, the start of the league? He's won the first three. Won the first three. We actually didn't because Davy wasn't hired until the end of October, start of November. So we were back. Probably one of the last teams that would actually that had their management team. I think we probably were. Um, hard to put your finger on it. Look, Davy brought just look. We got a bit of. I suppose structure there defensively was the big thing for us. We were leaking too many scores in Division One there for a long time, and I suppose structurally, uh, defensively in particular, we can we kind of sorted that area out. And like I said, league football is, I suppose, the pitch obviously isn't as fast. Yeah. There's a lot of lads there that once you get your defence in order, especially in the league, I think you know you'd be hoping to keep it tight for the game, and hopefully that your bench or your players will kind of see you out in the end. And to be honest, that was the that was the way it was, especially those first three or four games where. We were kept in the game, might not have been playing brilliant the whole time, but we kept in the game and we had a good bench then to come off and yeah. help us win games. So that was definitely the team for the first three games and look, had a bit of a blip in the middle, but uh, but finished strong and look, really good year, came third, probably just missed out on a mm. final. Um, but in terms of a Division One campaign, it was, look, it was very satisfying. And would Davey take a lot of this, would he take all the session, would he? Uh, he'd take a lot of it, yeah. Hang on, i got to get this in, look at this. <laughs> What's that called, Rubad? What? That's Boris. Yeah, <laughs> that he's uh, he's transformed our pitch the last uh, two years. And I must say, this pitch is looking absolutely fantastic. It's yeah. uh, it's like a carpet, <laughs> and uh, Boris has a lot to say about it. Yeah, yeah, he does. Thank he's, he's put a big he's put a big uh, lines and all diagonal. Yeah, he's put a big push in it. Yeah, he's <laughs> anyway, where are we? Yeah, yeah. Um, Davey, does he take the full session? <laughs> He'd do a mix. He'd be, he he is very hands on as a coach and a manager. Don't get me wrong, but look, we this year we had Mark McHugh, Jerry McGowan, he's right, Mark, who, had a, yeah. who had a big who had a big emphasis on the on the session as well, and they all had their kind of pieces in it. But um, Mark would do a lot of defensive work, would he? Coming from Donegal. It's funny you say that. He always says that. I don't know why people paint him with that. He's actually he's not really a defensive coach okay. at all. He, he's a coach, but he'd be very much about the attacking sense of it. But once you hear Donegal, he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. always paint with that brush. But uh, no, he, look, he do he do a mixture a bit of everything. And Jerry then Jerry would be very analytical about the game and t kind of a lot, a lot on structure. So there was a lovely mix there. And Davy then kind of ran the show from above. He, yeah, he'd yeah. be very hands on as well. But I know sessions all that were. Look, we're, we're good and had a real good setup this year. Very good. Um, we'll touch back on last year for a couple more questions, but we'll spin back there. You've had a Connacht title in 2017. Yeah, 17. That yeah. was one of your big years. Um, yeah. You got nominated for an All Star that year. Yeah. yeah. Um, remind me what happened after Connacht. Yeah, so won Connacht and then we lost to Mayo in the quarter final after a replay. Did you beat them in Connacht? Uh, no, we didn't. We beat Galway in the Connacht final. Okay. Galway had beaten Mayo in the semi, I think, or quarter. And then we beat Galway over in Salt Hill in the final. Um, then, yeah, played Mayo in the quarter final. Would have been, um, yeah, 2017, the first day. Drew with them. Probably game, possibly we left behind us in a way with chances. Um, and then the second day, they blew us out of the, blew us out of the water, hammered us. Um, yeah, no complaints the second day, but the first day was probably there for us. We just look, came up against Mayo, kind of stuck with us. Uh, they didn't panic when we had the good start. We got two goals early and they didn't panic. Um, in fairness, they kicked on. You know, some of their players, uh, Lee Keegan, Andy Moore, and really kind of took the bull by the horns that day and, mm. and kicked them on. And um, the second day then, I suppose, they just 
all their experience just blew us out of the water and weren't probably unlucky not to win the All-Ireland that year then, lost to Dublin by the point then that year. Yeah, and then was there another kind of title after that 2019, am I right? Yeah, 19, so Anthony Cunningham took over in 19. Uh, yeah, Connacht final, same again, beat Galway and Salt Hill. Um, very poor first half that day, we were 10-5 down at half time. And then second half really just came out and brilliant second half and beat them, beat them by four, I think, in the end. Or yeah, three or four in the end, which was, I was brilliant. It was a great day in Salt Hill. Real, real yeah. good memory out of that. Yeah, and the All Ireland series then? Yeah, Super 8s then. Um, that was first year, or second year of the Super 8s. And to, we, who was Tyrone, Dublin, and Cork in our group. <coughs> we had Tyrone first up in the height. Okay. They beat us by, I think, three or four points in the end. Probably a comfortable three or four points, if I'm, if I'm being honest. And then had to beat Dublin in Crow Park the next day, and we didn't. Um, yeah, I got well beat. Well Very beat that day. Yeah. Tough, tough assignment. And we beat Cork in the end in the last day, but Wasn't enough. it didn't mean anything for both teams. We were both knocked out because right, Tyrone okay. and Dublin had won their two games. So right, okay. that was yeah, that was that was kind of the story that year. Do you know, like like I said, I suppose we were very happy winning the Connacht title, but yeah. um and when it came to those the All Ireland series, I suppose we just um mm -hmm. haven't done as well as we would have hoped probably yeah. in the last couple of years, do you know? And I touched on the All Star nominee. Um, you might be modest, but um, there's obviously a lot of talk right now with you'd be in the line of definitely getting a nomination. You had a very good year this year. Um, fr from an outsider looking in, you'd be definitely up there with pushing now for a wing, wing half forward position. So do you know what way does the All-Stars work? Because I haven't talked with this actually in the past. Do you know the, before you go if you get it or not? Um, as far as I know, you do. Like I said, I haven't uh, been in yeah, that yeah. Village, But as far as I know... Are you told me that you don't? No? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, no okay. Well, right, no, right. well, I wasn't anyway that yeah, year. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming because I think there's a team release before, I think, either the football team or the hurling right. team. It's not till November or December, isn't it? Uh, normally, yeah. Normally, end of October, November. I think. Right, okay. Yeah, so that's the general gist. But um, yeah, no, you just... I think I think if you have one, I think you, you, you probably know. I think it'd be a bit of a shock if you didn't know. If you, right, if you okay. Got one. I, I had no idea how it worked. Yeah. Um, so this year, um, I guess after such a good league campaign, you probably felt as if you were very disappointed then in, in the in the championship running. Yeah, we were. Yeah, to be honest, look, it just ended really disappointing. Like in the space of six days, we went from, you know, possibly we had a chance of obviously topping the group against Kildare that day, depending on the Dublin result. But obviously Dublin beat beat Sligo well, so that was ruled out of the way. But definitely we had second in our mind at least to come second. But fairness, look, we didn't. We didn't um, do enough on the day to beat Kildare, and they were like to beat us by a point. Once again, it was kind of it was the last kick of the game. But to be honest, they were better than us on the day. I think yeah. they got two black cards in the middle of the first half, and probably if they didn't get those, they probably might have beaten us a bit yeah. more comfortably. So um, look, it was disappointing at the time. I remember after the game, being obviously naturally disappointed, but knowing that. We were still in it regardless six days later. Yeah, you know was that I mean? in Cork then? We were down in Cork, so we found out Monday morning and we drew Cork, who had, who had just beaten Mayo on the Sunday. Yeah, they peaked well, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. They came strong against Mayo that day in the last 15, 20 minutes because it looked like Mayo had them beat. But um, <coughs> yeah, look, and then once again, Cork game was funny. We would have felt that we'd done very well the first 30 to 35 minutes. First 30 minutes, we were 7-2 or 7-3 up. Yeah, yeah. They got a bit of a run on us then at the end of the end of the first half, and it went 7-6 at half time. And then second half, they probably took control for a lot large parts and went five up after getting the goal. And then we finished strong, hit five in a row to get back to level, and it looked like all the momentum was probably with us. Yeah. And then uh, they just ended up getting a score at the end. You probably don't want to talk about the last minute, do you? Ah, well, minutes, that game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did a bit of uh, viewing on YouTube after, and I actually I didn't know that uh, you're you're missing the f next championship game. Would that be right? Yeah. Well, I think I'm actually the missing the first national league game. I think it is. Is that what it is? Is that the same competition? Ah, uh, well, that's what I've been told <laughs> so far. You know, I'm okay. off the off the record. I think that's what I've been told. Hopefully, we we'll keep it that you way. You wouldn't be. You wouldn't have many red cards in your career, would you? Um, ah, no, I wouldn't. I, I'm not sure the number. I wouldn't have a whole pile. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I was harmless. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah look, it was just yeah, frustration. I think yeah, more than is. You're talking right, man. I understand. As it happens, as it happens. Okay, and uh, so one topic I want to talk about is S and C with you, and I hope you don't take this to offence, but <laughs> if I was looking back at 2012, let's say you're fresher, just out of minor, you would have always seemed to have the height. You would have probably agreed with me that you were someone that needed the bronze size. Would that be right? Yeah, oh, definitely. I was... I was always kind of a tall guy for my age, but you know, 
a scarecrow, do you know, really, really skinny guy. Did someone tell you that or you you knew yourself that you need to put on bulk oh, up? I, I knew, I knew myself, but I would have been told obviously as well that, do you know, it's fine maybe to an underage it's to a degree, but once you get to 21s senior, it's even yeah. senior club, like it's a total different ball game. You have to put on size or you'll 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 disappear essentially, mm. do you know. Um And what was the S and C scene like in let's say 10, 12 years ago? Um, look, we would have we would have had like all the typical you know, instructors, all that in terms of what we have now. Definitely, I suppose. Look, for me, the big thing about the gym and for anyone is buying yourself. You know, you can have the best instructors that you know that are out there, but if you don't actually put in the work yourself and discipline yourself, that this is going to be a big difference to my game. I think you're you're, you're fooling you're fooling yourself. It's the same. Like I, I'd always say. Having the technical ability and the football ability is probably needs to be at the top. Yeah. I think that's the most important. But the likes of your nutrition, your SNC, your psychology, there are very important blocks that need to be boxed off mm -hmm. to the best as you can get it. Now, some lads find it a lot easier, obviously, to put on muscle and to, to do other bits. And they might be better at you than the gym or whatever. But you might be better than them at something else. But you just need to, I suppose, get every bit of it out that you can get. And like the gym, it wasn't an overnight thing with me. It definitely took a lot of consistency, work. Um, you must have had to eat so, a lot, did you? Yeah, there was. I remember we were on um, oak gainer shakes when we were... Right, a thousand calorie shake. Oh, uh, yeah, on, on them. So we'd be taking two or three of them a day, a thousand calories, like you said, drinking them and very hard to stomach, obviously. Yeah. And you're doing your gym sessions, but that was a big part of it, you know, and you had to... Those were the things, let's say, I had to do uh, to get to that weight, whereas maybe the football side probably came a bit easier where yeah. someone else might have to work on their the football. Opposite, probably, I, yeah. I just found the uh, S&C... Uh, particularly at that age, a lot tougher to do because I probably hadn't immersed myself into it. And yeah. it was only my, myself, probably, you know, it was down to myself, um, to be honest. Um, but then once you buy into it, you see the benefits of it, you see, you know, what you're doing. Like people have this you know, perception that, oh, you're going to slow down if you do weights, which is nonsense. Like you're speeding up, you're, you're yeah. putting power in your legs, you're doing all that, all that good stuff to make yourself a better player. And um, it's when you realize that and you see the benefits. I think the big thing is seeing the benefits. Yeah. Once you see it, you just get a, an appetite for it. And yeah. um, I think that was a big, a big game changer, do you know. And through the years, were you always monitored twelve months a year, even when you left Roscommon and stuff? Um, was there SNC coach always checking in with you, making sure you were doing the stuff? There would have been. There would have been like that. Would have like I said when we finished with Roscommon, I probably would have been on to the SNC coach then. Do you know, maybe, maybe a few weeks later, maybe five yeah, or six yeah, weeks yeah, later. Yeah, you would look. You would have took a, a couple of weeks in there, back with your club. But but then when you realise, I suppose that. Do you know, you're training away with your club and all that, um, and you have your maybe you're coming to the end of your club season. You have your eye on the county season again. Yeah. That you're all right. I need to get back here and get do yeah. a bit of training to get myself to get the body prepared for the preseason because you know you always find find it with in preseason, especially younger lads who come into the panel. They tend to pick up injuries a lot, yeah, because they're just not their body isn't used to the workload and yeah. the heaviness of that. So if you go, I suppose from zero to hundred, if you do nothing from when you get knocked out to going back in November, like your body will, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be massive stress on the body. The body will be wondering what the hell is going on here. Yeah. I haven't been touched the weight in four months, yeah. and now. And would you run on your own off season? Yeah, the little off yeah, it would. I would do running. Um, like I would gym would be a big thing but it would be running try, maybe do other sports maybe a bit yeah. of astro soccer just yeah, to keep yeah, sharpness you know something exactly. like that do you know I wouldn't be I suppose I would probably try to keep my boots off me a lot like even just the running shoes maybe do you know mm. just the whole uh, I suppose mentality or psychology of togging out the whole time yeah, you're going to yeah. be togging out a lot no. throughout okay. the year so even just stay in the gym um, that kind of stuff would kind of keep me ticking over to then when you get ready to go back yeah good stuff like that, it's nice. Yeah, it's quality, isn't it's it? Nice, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's quality, yeah. <laughs> don't want to drink it all within no, no, within no, no. a minute. People think I'm fucking yeah. throwing it into me. Right, Anda, so we are moving on to our first segment of the video. Uh, 16 quick fire questions. And the reason why it's 16, as you all know, there is roughly 16 weeks in the regular club off season, okay? So um, this is yes or no kind of questions. So first one, diving straight into it. Would you rather win an All Ireland for your club or county? Jeez, club. Okay. Um, favorite drink of choice, alcohol, and do you drink? Yeah, yeah, I do. What's yeah. your favorite drink? Uh, pints or? Pint of Guinness, yeah. Pint, pint of Guinness, hard bet. Quite yeah. a common answer. Yeah. Non alcoholic then would be a can of Coke is hard bait. Yeah. After a game, maybe as a treat. Regular or, Coke? 
Regular, oh, yeah, regular, yeah. Forget about that zero stuff. <laughs> I think that's. I think it's a. Yeah, don't know. You're cutting. That's your, how you got the calories in as well. Yeah, you're cutting yourself. I think with the coke there, regular or nothing. And would you drink much in the off season? Would you be a big drinker? Do you think? Would you um, like your drink? I, I know. Like I suppose as much as any the next guy. I suppose you know from there's a certain stage there from whatever in season that you do so little of it that I think naturally when you finish you do go. F- yeah, yeah. You go to enjoy it a few more times, and I suppose this season or this time of the year with the club with every just every two week break with championship gotcha. you know naturally just go out with the lads after a game, after a game you okay. tip in and it's it's casual enough you know it's not a full blown thing till four or five in the morning there might be yeah. only seven eight drinks in yeah. after a game which is it's great to do you know so that'll be that's kind of the standard okay very good so what's your favorite takeaway order um a chinese chinese takeaway what what, what is it um shredded chili chicken something like that egg fried rice Nice and simple. Would you mix it up or you same every time? Same every time, yeah. Don't really mix it up too much. Okay. Thai food is, would, I might add, dabble into a bit of Thai food, but Chinese is... Is there any Chinese around here that's top quality? Yeah, one in town is, a, is quality Tai Chi Court. Tai Chi Court, Tai Chi okay. Court is, yeah, it's a, it's a go-to maybe, yeah, after, after a game <laughs> or, or a treat. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Favourite holiday destination? Um, Portugal. Portugal. Anywhere south of Portugal, yeah. Have you been anywhere this year? Uh, yeah, I was in. I was actually in Italy there a few weeks back, which was cla- first time in Italy. Where was that? Gorgeous. I was in Verona and Lake Garda. Very nice. So did kind of mix a few days in both. Quality, yeah. Really, really. It was roasting now over there at the time. Yeah. It was that really hot weather, but it was lovely. And what part of Portugal did you like? Uh, anywhere down the south, um, Faro, uh, Villamora, Quinta de Lago. Down there is lovely. Very good. Okay. Uh, favorite pair of boots? What are you wearing now? You're I'm wearing actually rocking a pair of Nikes. I actually don't. This is my first pair of Nikes. I'd say in in a long time. I'd normally be an Adidas man. Um, Adidas X is okay. Would, would have been typical. Did you ever me. get an endorsement or a bastard or stuff or anything? No, no? never. No, never. Often. Always paid for your boots. Always paid for them. Yeah, good good citizen. Yeah. yeah. So uh, um, no, just yeah, wearing the Nikes now. Just this year, wore the Nikes. Found them great. I suppose I've. I like a, a light boot, so okay. I, I might find it wouldn't be... Um, Modern yeah, game, there's not much kicking. Yeah, yeah, that's true as well, I suppose. A lot of hand-passing, but uh, yeah, something light on the foot, just yeah, get me around the pitch. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, your, m- sorry, least favourite football pitch? Club or county? Place you hate going to? Least? Mm. That's a good question. Uh, least favourite in... <laughs> Played in Loud, the old Loud pitch. Andrada? Andrada. Yeah, I rolled Rahal- No, I know what I played there too. It's up and down, and yeah. that was their county grounds. Yeah, we played yeah, their league it. game a few years ago. And oh, yeah. Rahalis is their, is their club. Is that it? I'm near sure. I'm sorry if I got that wrong to them, but I know the pitch, and there's, there's, there's dips in the middle of the pitch and stuff. Yeah, that was yeah, a tough day out. That day, you know, yeah. the pitch was, yeah, it was. Did you lose that game? No, we won. Okay. But just I remember the yeah. pitch being, you know, Jesus, we're struggling here. Well, that's why it's gone now. They're not playing there. They're playing in. Uh, they're playing their games in Meath, weren't they? Yeah, they were playing in Navan there. Because it's yeah. getting done up. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's yeah. one for them. The morning routine. Do you have one? Um, no, not nothing in particular. I suppose like when I'm working, when I'm back in school and that, it's fairly it's fairly standard. Do you know what I mean? Make overnight oats from the night before. Is that is that what you do? Yeah, that like would be routine? my standard. Okay. It'd be something something really light in the morning when I wake up. I wouldn't be huge to getting into food first thing i get up maybe a banana and maybe a glass of juice maybe in the morning and then when i get to my first break at 10 half 10 is my oats and that but other than that it's 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 fairly standard there's nothing nothing too out of the ordinary very good very good so um oh this is a good one i don't remember writing this last minute penalty you're one point down do you put over the bar for extra time or goal to win it goal go for goal. the goal yeah crazy do you know anybody that would take the point um <laughs> few defenders probably would take your point <laughs> but I yeah I don't see the like you have a free shot yeah, from 12 yards out I don't see why you turn your nose up at go ahead and a goal no definitely yeah goal pre-game ritual are you superstitious um I'm not overly I suppose always shower and shave the morning of a game clean shave okay. that's just uh, nothing like I'd never really clean shave but always the morning of a game right. shower and sh- club clean and shave. county uh yeah yeah pretty much yeah Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, cha- yeah, games, championship games. And would you eat the same? F- would you eat the same foods and stuff the day of yeah, the game? Exactly. That nailed down. Yeah, exactly. Do you mind t- walk me through that? Yeah, for sure. So I suppose a standard maybe three o'clock game. Okay. Um, would be up at whatever in the morning, eight, half eight. Um, 
something light, maybe a slice of toast and some scrambled egg, okay. just to keep me ticking over. Um, coffee, black coffee. Um, and then leading up to the game then, it's always a kind of chicken stir fry and noodle dish with a bit of teriyaki sauce. Okay. That's my always my go-to. Um, we kind of be sip, uh, chipping away in the dress room, um, maybe a gel before the game okay. or at half time in the game. Um, but so other than that, I don't... Uh, That's not that much food. I don't like to overdo it, no. No. Don't overdo it. And would it. you be big in carb load the day before? Yeah, I'd probably get uh, would carb load. You'd overeat the day before? The day before. Um, oh, it's funny, look at that, the carb loading. I used to probably overdo the carb loading at okay. times and I'd be feeling rubbish then sluggish. the next, really sluggish next day. And I I suppose I mixed and matched with a few different things then this year and you know different games and that and found that I didn't need to be you know I'm I'm weighing whatever 93 kg or whatever so they say that I probably need to be eating maybe 600 grams of exactly. carbs it's a lot, isn't it? which is it's a, an unbelievable I, amount yeah I um, never understood that either and I really struggled to put that back so I just what I just used to do like I'd have my meals or whatever and I'd have carbs with everything just yeah. maybe a few extra carbs than I would normally, but didn't overdo it, and I found it worked better for me, to be honest. Okay. Just didn't overdo the whole carb loading. Okay. Now, I know you probably wore GPS with the county. Did you wear GPS with the club? No, I wouldn't wear it with the club, no. Uh, would that be the only performance tracker that you would use? Do you have a Garmin? Do you have a Whoop or anything? I uh, don't know. I don't use the Garmin or, or the Whoop. Uh, just the GPS with, 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 the, with the team for training and games and that. Um, nothing against them at all. Don't get me wrong. Just I find myself... Uh, happy enough to you're confident in your own feel your body yeah and stuff. feeling my body how i'm feeling i don't i suppose let's say i know how I'm, yeah exactly how i'm feeling in terms of the gps like great information and all the sleep brilliant information don't get me wrong but i suppose i'm very happy with my own call and how right. i'm feeling and because you wouldn't be a player that would ring like not ring but you contact the gps game like i want to see those stats you just let them deal with it and you pl yeah deal with if, your own. if there was something out of the ordinary maybe in a game where do you know, I felt that I'd done less or more maybe a game. I might give him a text and say, any chance of that? Yeah, okay. But generally, I'd be more thinking about the game, the actual like on the ball stuff, yeah. off the ball stuff. Do you know, and like you said, you could have someone who runs, you know, 15K in a game but doesn't contribute to the game where exactly. someone run 8K and kick 2-4. Do you know, that's yeah. be more, that you know, that's the aim of the game, I suppose. Just, you know. Absolutely. So, um, Daytime or nighttime game? Uh, day. Daytime, day okay. yeah. So we don't play enough nighttime no, games. No, it's all day. It was just college games, really. Yeah, we won lights. one or two night in the league, but we just don't play enough of them. They're, yeah. they're good atmospheres, but just don't play enough of them probably to appreciate them. Yeah, midweek or weekend game then? Um, weekend. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, you, we mentioned alcohol at the start. Do you have any hangover cure routine that you <laughs> stand by? Uh. Maybe a uh, sea out to the sea. Just get yeah. the head, get the head under there. That's if is it, is it far from here? We're, uh, we're about thirty five minutes to would be Ross's Point. Would be down Sligo. You pass a few pubs on the way. To yeah, the sea. you do the pass a few pubs, and it's a bit of a journey. Is <laughs> yeah, it's a long journey when you're not feeling the best. Yeah. But yeah, anything to do with that. I like to see when I'm in Dublin. I'm yeah. fifteen minutes, and it's straight out there. Just yeah, yeah. just get clear the head out there. Brilliant. Okay, so who's your toughest marker? Um. Good question. Been a few, I suppose. Um, Lee Keegan definitely gave me a couple of really tough days. That quarter final I was mentioning about earlier, that day he really kind the of replay. No, the first day. The first day. It was he he really pulled the kind of horns for me out there. Did you play midfield that day? I was playing midfield, yeah. He just he just tagged. He you. came out and tagged, yeah. So he put a massive pressure on me that day. Um Liam Silk from Galway. Yeah. Always underage. We were always in good battles with each other. A um, couple of them guys, um, John Small, Dublin. Then, mm. yeah, whenever he's picked me up, he's he's he's, he's tough, tough yeah, character as well. So, imagine. yeah, any of them, tough, tough. It's three top guys. Yeah, tough. Days now, out. mention your position there. You played midfield, wing forward. I don't know if you devil, you devil, devil. If you've been in the defence at all, wing back or anything. No. Played a bit of wing back with the club last year. Yeah. Yeah. So anywhere inside the forward line? Yeah, I played a bit small bit inside, but. Never really. Sparingly, yeah. Not, 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 not much at all. So what would be your favourite position then out of the whole lot of them? Half forward line. Yeah. Anywhere, anywhere along the half forward line is probably my favourite position. Any reason why? or? Um, no reason. No, no I, I, hard to put your finger on. I just, I suppose inside, I suppose my movement, I suppose my bigger guy that, I suppose inside is a lot about your sharp movement, mm -hmm. your short shuttles over and back. I'm probably not that kind of player. I'm probably more of a... Mm. 
um, I kind of pick up probably speed the, the longer I keep yeah. going, if you get me. Um, I suppose out the field, you can get on ball, be more involved, you can definitely be more of a playmaker and you can kind of chip in with a couple of scores, which, which I kind of am. I wouldn't be in... I wouldn't be your, you know, a typical, let's say, Kieran Mert there, mm. or, you know, someone like that who kicks in seven, eight points a game. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably a couple, two or three points a game and try and get involved to set up other lads and that. Yeah. So I think out the field, that half forward line, midfield as well, I suppose, as well, is um, definitely where I'm most comfortable. Would that be one of your targets to kick, chip in with a couple of points? Yeah, You'd be disappointed if you didn't? Yeah. yeah, it would be, yeah, it really would. Yeah, so definitely something yeah. that I aim to do uh, most games. Definitely kick a score. Right, okay. Well, we'll see what your shooting's like in a minute. <laughs> uh, so, last question. It's the last minute, uh, and you're in full forward, and you need a win and pass. Who are you wanting to kick it into? Clobar County. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, who's going to kick it into me? It's a couple. I have two on the mind that are... You can shout both of them if you shout want. Shout both then. of them. Uh, one would probably be Brother Donny. Right. Just off his left, I let him. Yeah, just let him float one in, and then the other one would be. Oh, it's just a, do you want to say it or not? Yeah. Uh, you don't want to give him the credit? No, no. I usually don't. It's just not at all. It's just it's uh, definitely Donny and probably Jeremy Murta as well. Right, okay. Yeah. Both left footers? Both lefties, yeah. Right, both playing number 11. Both around the left, out the fit, yeah, just yeah, hit yeah. them, yeah. Don't need a good sweep kick, didn't he? Yeah, 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 he's, yeah. Nah, he's good, yeah, he's good off the left, yeah, for sure. And Jeremy, Jeremy as well is, is, de is deadly off the left as well, so. Brilliant, very good. Good stuff. Right, Enda, moving on to our second segment. A bit more of a fun segment. So we have our shooting challenge. We're going to keep the same shooting challenge that we did in season one. It worked really well. It's very challenging. Sam Alroy hit 10 out of 11 and we're going to keep that leaderboard as well. Okay, so we have three shots across the 13. The middle shot has to be your weak foot. Yep. We have three shots across the 21. Middle one is your weak foot. We have three around the D whatever foot you like and then we have a shot from the 45 if you take it out of your hands it's worth one if you take it off the floor and you succeed it's worth two so out of 10 kicks the highest possible score you can get is 11. perfect and there's no time limit you take your time pop them over you talked about uh <laughs> two or three points a game yeah and there's nobody marking you here okay so and we won't pitch no no excuse exactly yeah with a big win behind them as well <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're down here <laughs> okay and so some people go outside of the right some people like to go left whatever your preference is i'm gonna let you at it say nothing lovely the confidence to go with your left foot there your first shot <laughs> i know <laughs> now this no has to be your weaker foot your left foot okay yeah <laughs> Your heart dropped, didn't it? It did, it did. Because <laughs> there's no retakes on this. That's casual, that's too casual. Two there, from two. <laughs> oh, Short. End that. Short. Lad, three from five. Better. Ah, can't give it. Man, three from six. Good lad. Four from seven. You're gonna skip the middle one and go over to the other one, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Lad, five from eight. Good lad. Points. So, excuse me, say that again, you get that? You want to go outside the left for two points. Yeah. I think that's fair, isn't it? You can stick with your weak foot outside the left, that's worth two points. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, 
is that your first rodeo? <laughs> What's that? Eight from eleven. Eight from eleven. You saved yourself saved there. Saved after the two shots. That's, that's, that's a that's a clip worthy of TikTok. <laughs> that is great stuff. Uh, eight from eleven. Uh, came back rightly there. Um, not bad. We'll we'll actually do that for the rest of the episodes. If someone wants to hit outside the left, if we can beat that, it's worth two. Good stuff. <laughs> we'll move on a bit of speed stuff now. Um, no hamstring issues. Not yet, anyway. Let's get into it. Do you struggle with your daily protein intake? Well, ASAP, the plant-based company, has you covered. They are an Irish company who have created a delicious dairy-free protein shake with 20 grams of protein, along with less than 175 calories per bottle. They have all your essential vitamins as well as prebiotic fiber, so it really is a top-class product for sports people. You can use TOS20 after going into their website, asapvegan.ie. So, Wenda, we're moving on to the last segment of the video. We're going to go into our speed challenge, okay? Now, in season one, what we did is what we did a 40-yard dash, okay? But this time, we're going to up our game. In season one, we used a stopwatch. But what we're going to do is we're going to use speed gates, which have been kindly sponsored by ASAP, the plant-based company. And what we're going to do is we're going to start on the 45-meter line, and you're going to build 30 meters up to the red cone. And all we're going to do is we're going to measure the speed it takes over 10 meters, okay? So it's a 30 meter build into a 10 meter fly. We'll do a couple of warm up and then you have one go at it. And it'll come up on my phone exactly how many seconds it takes for you to cover uh, 10 meters. And that'll be your max sprint speed, okay? Super. Yep. Let's go into our warm up. Build, build, build. And then 80% through the cones. Good, so that's 1.23. That's it, good lad. So that's 1.11. So that is quick. So in my experience professionally, anything number under 1.1 seconds is quick or under, you know, if you get close to 1.05, my quickest guy is 1.09 that I've worked with, okay? All right, so now it's the proper so one. So now it is the proper one. You have one go at it, but take as much recovery as you like. Yeah. Hard drive! 1.1 on <laughs> and the dot, okay? Good stuff. 1.1. Oh. Okay, we'll have a screen recording as well. Stuff, all Not right? Too bad, yeah. Not well too done. Bad. Well done. And, uh, Brilliant episode, it's great to be back. I was a bit rusty there for a while, but I had my groove back okay. So, brilliant. Uh, best luck for the club, the club championship. Thanks, um, I'll yeah. keep it a close eye. Hopefully, he's get back to the feats he's got the last year. Yeah. Um, those of you back home, please, if you can, hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. It really helps us get uh, more and more names, bigger names, keep things more exciting, more challenges, and also leave a comment below um, who you think would be a good fit for the off-season, season two. And uh, thanks, Shane. Brilliant. Come on. Great stuff, man. Good luck. Great stuff. Yeah.